Hello, welcome to the County Swift Survey 2020 presentation. Uh, my name is Ricky Whelan. Um, I'm a project officer with Birdwatch Ireland and I do a lot of work uh, with uh, to do with urban bird species and a great deal of that work is uh, centered around swifts uh, where we've been focusing a lot of our conservation efforts and policy efforts over the last few years. Um, this year I'm delighted to say we will be conducting county swift surveys in counties Clare, Leitrim, Roscommon and South County Dublin. Um, so I'm going to talk you through various aspects um, about the SWIFT and about the surveys and hopefully by the end of it you'll know all you need to know uh, how to get involved etc and by the time we reach the end of the presentation. So this year um, is a year like no other really we, we, we were afraid earlier in the year that we wouldn't be able to complete the surveys at all but as restrictions have slowly uh, been, able, been lifted we're able to get out um, in using social distance um, and following the government guidelines to do conduct the survey work. In a normal year, I would do a bit of a road show um, and present this presentation or a similar one in the various counties and get people involved and tell them all about it. So project background, um, over the years since 2017, we've surveyed seven counties um, so far for, for nesting swifts. They are County Offaly, Leash, Westmead, Tipperary, Meath, Wicklow and Sligo. You'll see with the map there that's got all our data um, together there and that shows the, all the various nest sites and what you can identify from that map is the counties that we've surveyed and other people have surveyed like Swift Conservation Ireland over in Mayo and um, Birdwatch Ireland branch in, in Kildare and Wild Kildare group members as well in Kildare. So you can see all the counties that have lots of dots. They represent swift nest sites and colonies and you can nearly identify the towns um, from looking at the dots and where they are and the focus, the hotspots around the country and um, from those. So you can see some of the big towns there, big cluster up around Sligo, for example, around Sligo town, lovely old town and uh, really good for swift. So hopefully, um, when we're finished the survey this year in Leitrim and Roscommon, there'll be plenty of dots up around there uh, as well as in, in Dublin and over in Clare. Hopefully we'll fill the map with plenty of dots, which will all represent swift nest sites. So in this presentation, we're going to talk a bit about swift identification, swift ecology, conservation issues affecting swifts, County Swift Service 2020, what it's all about and, and how we conduct those, how you can contribute. Um, surveying SWIFT, so little tips about how you can get your eye in there and, and help us out. Submitting your sightings and then how to contact us if you have any sightings or, or, or things you want to discuss. So here's a SWIFT and uh, we've already seen a couple of pictures of them. Um, really, really amazing species. Um, very, very <clears throat> interesting ecology and behaviour. Um, the bird is a migratory species. It spends its winter uh, down in Africa, flying around places like the Congo Basin. It's following the rains and after the rains down the Congo and places like that, there's a profusion of insects that are living on those airborne in insects, sucking them all up, eating them and getting their energy up to migrate back up to Europe to breed during the summer. An amazing thing about swifts is they only ever land to nest and breed. They All the other time, eight months, nine months of the year, is spent in, in in, in in flight, in constant flight, where they feed, where they um, drink, where they mate, and where they even sleep. So they can sleep on the wing. It's really, really amazing species, and people are blown away by that fact. You can see their appearance. They look black silhouetted against the summer sky, but in, in actual fact, they're kind of an ashy brown um, if you see them up close in good light, like this picture here. So they have a very, very large um, breeding distribution across the globe. So um, we're over on its western edge of its, its distribution range, its breeding distribution. And they breed all the way east into Mongolia, northern China, um, southern um, Russia, all those places. So they have a massive uh, distribution. You see the big yellow blob there is their, their, their breeding distribution. And the blue blob down in Africa is where they spend the winter. So all the southern parts of, of Africa, south of the Sahara. They spend the winter flying around there, as I said, looking for insects before returning north in spring and um, up into Europe. Um, late April, early May, we first start seeing them arrive in, in Ireland. So 
So there are a number of species that you need to be familiar with if you're going to get your eye in on swifts and be able to identify them and find their nest sites and various things. The four species pictured here you'll see don't look particularly like swifts um, at all really but that's very easy to say when you're looking at four still photographs. If we go from clockwise from left um, you have the swift itself, you've seen that image larger a second ago. Um, they've got that sickled wing shape and a sh sh shallow forked tail that you can't really see in this image, but um, silhouetted against the sky, they do look um, almost completely black. Compare then to the guys on the right hand side, the, the, the swallow. Um, we're all familiar with, they nest in our turf sheds and, and, and barns and um, porches and all sorts of places um, up in the sort of between the timbers on the half cup nest which we'll see in a moment. And they've got the big white belly and the white underwings and the banded mask, the inky blue, uh, sort of banded, almost like a balaclava with a red chin. And I think everyone's familiar with the swallow and they're a great bird of summer. Um, but they, when they're all zooming around at sort of 60, 70 miles an hour, silhouetted in the summer sky, they can be easy to confuse. The guy in the bottom um, left, the house martin is a is a dumpy little bird or stout little birds and they've got two distinguishing features they've got the white rump patch above the tail between the wings and the tail as you see in the image and a big white chin patch there that you can see from below when they're zooming around and they um, are the guys who nest up in under the eaves of your house and often there'll be nice long rows of sort of terraces of house martin nests and people sometimes mix up those nests with the nests of swallows which are which are normally inside under cover Sand Martins then, the guys in the bottom right, again, similar, very similar in shape to the House Martin, which is closest relative here. Uh, but they've got a big white belly and they've got a narrow uh, chin strap uh, separating their, their white chin from their, their white sort of body parts below. Um, and they're, again, looking at the photo, don't look very similar to Swifts at all. Um, but all zooming around when you have all those four species zooming around together in the summer sky, it's trickier than you think. So we have images here of their nest site. So really good rule of thumb with swifts is if you can see the nest site, it's not a swift. Swifts always nest inside under cover in cavities in walls, in buildings and structures. So 99% of the nest sites uh, found um, are in buildings and they're, they're what we call an urban bird species. They've adapted over millennia to nest in, in man-made structures. Um, so this guy here, you see in the top left image, He's heading up for the gap under that, that roof, the ridge tile or the, 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 the ridge in that tile. And he's going to nest in top there in the roof space. You can't see the nest unless you lifted that tile off. On the right then, top right, you've got the swallows. Typical nest, everyone will be familiar with, especially this time of year. And um, they've been back a few, a few weeks now and they've all built their nests and they'll have young probably very soon in the nest. And you'll see those little chicks um, sticking out over the half cup nest, as you see there in, in a barn. The guy in the bottom left then is the house martin. You're seeing people out there and they almost fully enclose their nest cup. And you can see their nest is made up of tiny little mouthfuls of mud, all sort of formed in nice sort of bricks. Um, and they will be up under the eaves of the houses and under the fascia and soffit. Um, and they can get quite messy and um, they can build up quite large colonies. But again, if you can see the nest, it's not a swift. Lastly, down at the bottom right, we have sand martins so-called because of their chosen nest site in sandbanks, often in quarries in the corners where, where a river has eroded, a nice steep bank, and um, they will excavate little tunnels and they'll nest in there. That's your sand martin. So swift nest sites. So what we're really after with this survey is to find our nest sites, uh, because if we can find our nest sites, we can, we can keep an eye on those sites and protect them into the future. And that means then we have source population from which to grow the, the, the population from. So once we have some um, birds there, we can always expand on it, but we've no birds left in the towns. It's very tricky to attract them back in. So nest sites are key. So they're nearly always in buildings. And I say nearly because you do get the very odd um, pair um, and colony in um, coastal cliffs and even in quarry cliffs in sort of um, old crags and gaps they can find there. But they're almost always in buildings. You see here a very typical site um, underneath where that pipe is coming out of that old red brick wall. You can see the tail of a bird, a swift, sticking out there. And you can see other birds, just one is blurred, it's coming at us so fast. 
and the other one is dropping from a nest site up in a crack up under that uh, soffit you can see the white soffit going across so they really really only need a couple um of inches of a small crack to to squeeze into and um, to be able to have um a, a nest inside so again i'll remind you if you can if you can see a nest from the externally it's not a swift so that's a very typical site there under the pipe you can see they nest semi colonially so they like where other swifts nest so often if you find one nest you'll find multiple nests so old heritage buildings big old georgian houses and um, anywhere that there's plenty of opportunities plenty of gaps and places for them to come and go you'll find you'll often find more than one so really good if you can find a building with an s swift you'll often find a colony in there and these are really important to protect and in some cases colonies can be 50 60 um pairs uh, in number so they are really really important colonies so we have to protect those a key fact um about swifts is they're, they're site faithful so they return to the very same uh, crack and crevice and gap to breed every year so it's really important that uh, lots of people will get up and do roof repairs and wall repairs and not realize that actually they're they're stopping ac uh, swifts accessing the wall uh, when they return the following year so really it's one of their um it's one of the pros in, in conserving swifts but also a con because they rely so heavily on that one site it's easy to protect those colonies where you know they are but also they're heavily reliant on them and if they get sort of ousted from those sites it's very hard for them to find a new site so really important that we protect the existing ones they pair for life but they mightn't be mature enough to breed until they're four or five and they probably live to around 11 or 12 maybe so they haven't got a huge amount of breeding seasons ahead of them and like, as i said if they lose a nest site it's a very very serious problem for them So I want to talk about the declining populations and, and why we're bothered with swifts or why we care. So most recent studies showing um, their declines at 57.7% the population decline. That's the Countryside Bird Survey. It's just been published. So that's from a period between 98 and 2016. So in less than 20 years, we've lost nearly 60% of our swift populations in Ireland. You can see those images on the left. And then on the right, um, also recent data from a different study, the Bird Atlas, which is covers um, an area in Britain and Ireland, and that survey is repeated uh, every 20 years. And you can see here in blue, the gray blue um, squares are where there's been declines since the 91 breeding atlas compared to the 2011, the last breeding atlas. So it's very significant and very clear to see the declines that there's been in the populations across Britain and Ireland in that period. So we have declining populations of swifts, but what are the reasons for that? So there's a couple of images here that kind of sum things up. Um, see in the top left, modern buildings are designed um, and built with materials that are just not suitable um, for swifts. They're, they're, they're so well built, so well designed to be airtight. Um, we hear about sort of passive houses, all that sort of stuff. That is bad news for swifts. I'm not saying we should be building houses with, with lots of holes in them and things, but there are ways to integrate um, swift nest cavities into modern buildings and still have um, good insulation values, but also have quality nests, permanent nest sites for swifts. The guys on the right, very typical um, sort of image in the summer, stripping a roof of tiles to replace the old timbers uh, and the membrane. And nine times out of 10, lots of buildings will this will happen before they even realize the swifts are there and all of a sudden the carpenters will be up on the roof to be swifts buzzing around and um, wondering why they can't get into their nest site and the carpenters will be wondering what's going on because swifts don't build big external nests and they only build with materials that are they can catch whilst in flight their nests aren't huge structures so often uh, builders won't even see nests um, or, or sort of notice anything sort of significant when they strip a roof so Really, if we can identify the buildings, we can mark the cards of the owners that there's swifts in there. You can do repairs and renovations, no problem, but it must be outside the swift nesting season, which runs from May to the end of August. So it can be a bit tricky, but it's 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 in most cases when you when you inform an owner that um, it can be avoided, they're very happy to sort of comply and, and, and do that for you. See the church with the scaffolding. So there's work going on here. Um, potentially won't even affect the nest sites inside 
but the hoarding and the scaffolding restricts the access to the adult birds. So again, that's a big no-no. If you know there are swifts there to be putting up scaffolding between May and August. Now, roof repairs have to be done, especially on our old um, our old buildings. So we accept that, but you can take advice and, and do stuff to avoid um, that, that problem. The guy there in the middle represents the Celtic tiger, which probably did swifts a lot of harm because of the rate of development in this country, demolition of old buildings, probably containing lots of swifts um, and various things. Um, probably we lost a lot of colonies during that period and that boom in Ireland. And we think in Dublin, the rate of decline is probably much faster because the development hasn't slowed and picked up quicker um, compared to other parts of the country. So we see the bumper uh, on the car in the bottom left and it's full of dead insects. Um, and that sort of represents um, what we used to see probably in this country over the last 20 years when there'd be lots of moths and, and midges and insects stuck to the car bonnet and windscreen and we don't see the same numbers anymore and that shows a decline in the insect prey available for swifts that they can feed themselves with and bring back to the young and the problem isn't that swifts are falling out of the sky hungry but we we we, we reckon and we're, we're beginning to become concerned whether the level and um, the, the number of chicks they can fledge successfully is suffering slowly over time because they just don't have enough food to to have as much success in getting more um, young away from the nest each year. So it's a very, very gradual decline in populations over time. So in summary, I suppose the Swifts have a housing crisis in Ireland, much the same as, as humans do, um, uh, as well as potentially some problems with accessing enough food um, and that's 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 all tied up together and it's it's resulting in those declines of up to 60 percent that i talked about a minute ago so what is the objectives of our project so uh, the main objective is to carry out detailed survey of swifts in our cities towns and village to locate those nesting colonies within the buildings Secondly, we want to engage with local communities through liaison with tidy towns groups, uh, other community groups and local residents to encourage local people to take an active part in swift survey work and conservation now and in the future. And we're adapting that approach this year. Like I said, I'd normally be on a road show trying to um, drum up support, get people involved and um, bring people out to show them swifts and do lots of events like that. But this year we have to change our, 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 our approach. So we're going to have a more um, focus on social media and in local print media and stuff to, to alert people to the decline of swifts and what they can do at a local level to help conserve them. So um, it'd be lots and lots of stuff on, on, on online um, and in the papers over the summer. Thirdly, we want to work with local groups and communities and the local authority to implement swift conservation projects uh, at a local level. So informed by the project report in autumn we, and the recommendations that, that we will we will write up for for each county. Um, we want the sort of locals to take on the baton um, of of conserving and looking after their own swifts locally, because long after uh, the report has gathered dust in the Birdwatch Ireland office, um, it'll be the locals who are responsible and the protectors of, of the swifts in their communities. So what Birdwatch Ireland do as part of the County Swift Service is the bulk of the survey work, getting out there, finding the buildings and the structures where the, 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 the nesting swifts are, compiling that data and that detail, recording exactly where they are, and then going away and crunching that and analyzing it mapping um where the where the swifts are you see on the right hand side number of yellow dots and that's in in in, in wicklow town and the bigger the dots sort of the bigger the colony so a couple of big big colonies in wicklow town and a couple of smaller ones so that's the type of mapping we do so we can indicate exactly um from a sort of uh, bird's eye view where they are in the town and we can identify patterns from that if it's an old part of town or if there's a particular good hot spot to try spread those colonies from later on and then we, we we detail exactly the nest entrance points for the swifts and that's to the level of detail is important because if you see with that warehouse there that's on the bottom left of the screen we've got five nest detail there if those guys wanted to do some roof repairs or some wall repairs we can give them that photo give the carpenters the photo and just say look lads avoid those areas leave those gaps leave those gaps open 
for the Swifts to return. But no, no, no hassle otherwise. Complete whatever repair work you need. And then at the end of the report, we compile a detailed. Um, sorry, at the end of the survey, we compile a detailed report uh, outlining where all the nest sites are across all the towns and villages within the county, and we give recommendations for each. Um, what we would suggest to be done to first halt the declines locally and then to build and increase the population where possible. The project timeline is simple from late May to early June will be a raising awareness, sending out press release, doing lots of social media stuff and um, putting up short videos and um, this this presentation will be shared widely and we'll be looking for swift records locally so from local bird watchers uh, from local residents and um, from the heritage officers from our birdwatch ireland branch members all sorts of places will be will be leaving no rock unturned to try get local leads on where swift colonies might be so make sure we can visit those sites and log them accordingly from mid-may then um through to august um, we would be doing the field work so uh, it'll be on the way across the towns and villages so we're a bit late this year in starting so we're starting off in early june um, and that'll be good it'll be a benefit in a way because the swifts will be well underway with their nesting so they're a little bit easier to find uh, but in a normal year we'd be from mid-may through to mid-august we'd be doing the field work um, and looking for those uh, visiting all the towns and villages across the counties and looking for those colonies then from August through to September is a big data analysis crunch. So you can think there'll be hundreds of photos, uh, hundreds of records, uh, various things to be checked and ground truth and all sorts of things. And then we compile the report. Then from autumn, we will publish the report um, with the local authority and we might launch it then or we might hold fire till the following spring um, when people are sort of getting enthused about the spring and the migrant birds arriving again. It's normally a better time to release the, the report and the findings. So we'll follow up with county workshops next year to discuss the results and the recommendations with local groups and, and active people who want to get involved in, in swift conservation measures locally. So what we want you to do is we want you to familiarize yourself uh, with swifts and what they look like and what they sound like. And I'll play a clip of a swift now so you can you can get familiar with that. So that's what the scream of a swift sounds like. It's really quite unusual. And normally it's the first um, clue you get to swifts being present along a street. And it's a really good sign if swifts are screaming and, and flying around excited like that at roof level, it's a really good indication that they're nesting very close by. So if you've got swifts quite low down in the street level or around the building and they're screaming, you're probably quite close to a, a nest site or a nest colony. So once you've found some swifts, we want you, or if you if you have um, an inkling that you know where there's swifts nesting, um, we want you to email us. And I'll give you those email addresses later. Um, and then next, next sort of over the autumn and winter and through next spring, we want you to hopefully get involved like these guys down in St. Oliver Plunkett's uh, Boys National School. They, they, they got some swift boxes from our local Westmead branch. Um, and they've put up swift boxes there to try to attract swifts to, the, to nest on the school. So they are the sort of local conservation measures we want to see and um, follow it on from the, from the project. So the best time to observe swifts. So some basic sort of tips when you're, when you're surveying for swifts or keeping an eye out for them. So look out for swifts between mid-May and, and the end of August. There's no point before that because they're not even in the country. And there's no point after that because, again, they're, they're headed south back, back for the southern part of Africa. Survey during key swift activity windows. So you will see swifts in the middle of the day, but there's two key periods that you'll see more swifts um, more often. Um, so between 9 and, and 12 noon, they're not the earliest risers because they're insectivorous. Um, they're waiting for the heat to get up in the day and for the insects to get on get on the wing and, and, and get up into the air column. So they're not in a massive rush. Um, like blackbirds and stuff to get up and get feeding really early in the morning so between 9 and 12 they're often feeding quite close to their nest sites and you'll see them around the towns and the villages then during the day i say they they, they, they seem to it wouldn't totally vanish but definitely the, the the activity levels drop 
but again from sort of 7 p.m right through to dusk and even dark you'll see loads more swift so that is really the key time so if we're ever saying if you're stuck for time and you you just have a short window uh try try observing in the evening time it's definitely the peak period always have a look for swifts and survey for them in in calm uh, warm weather you really don't see them much in cold wet or windy weather they they because they're insectivorous they don't waste their time flying around looking for for insects where they can't find them so they often will stay well ahead of the weather or avoid it altogether so calm warm evenings is your best time and and don't bother otherwise i would say you're just getting cold for no reason um always listen for the screaming call of the swifts it's it's quite unusual uh, really characteristic um and you will really narrow down your search area if you if you learn this call you'll start noticing it a, a, a lot and it it sounds quite strange in isolation but in the soundscape of a town or a village where there's traffic and a breeze and other birds singing and, and other sounds it really does blend in more than you would think and i'm going to play that uh, for you to familiarize yourself with it a little So it's quite strange, and um, but like I say, it does it does um, doesn't stick out as much as you would think. Identify suitable buildings in your com community. So I've already uh, talked a lot about sort of older buildings where they like. So but the nest anywhere that there's nice gaps and, and various things. So I always say uh, convents are good, old hospitals, old schools, uh, Georgian buildings, places like that that might have uh, more gaps than your your modern buildings. Um, old town halls, really nice as well. Uh, any historic uh, property or structure like that always worth worth a look. Um. If you find swifts or if you're familiar with a building that you've always seen uh, unusual birds flying around or you think you've heard that noise before definitely check them out and try to confirm it this year and um, we say take a photo of the building if you're positive their swifts um, have entered or exited an nest site um, and that's because with bigger colonies it can actually be quite hard to track how many nest, uh, nest sites there are inside so if you're dealing with um, maybe um, an old castle in a town or something like that really good to take a photo and you can mark um, digitally on, on, on the photo um, the different nest uh, locations and that'll let you get an idea of how many nests might be in, 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 the, in, those, in those walls. Uh, keep a record of the date, time and any other relevant information. So we'll ask you, uh, we want to know what, what the county is, uh, what the locality is, so the town or village, what street you were on or, or, or description of the of the location and what type of building was it? Was it a church um, and how many swifts you've seen? So that's all very relevant information to us that we can follow up on. And if you get stuck or you need a pointer, just email swifts at birdwatchireland.e and we'd be quite happy to confirm um, whether it was swifts you saw or if it's something else. We won't um, we won't get angry if it if it sounds like a different species altogether. There, there is quite a uh, confusion out there, so so don't be worried or embarrassed about that. Swifts again for good measure. So next, I want to play a clip of a video a colleague of mine, Brian Caffrey, made a number of years ago. Ireland's special swifts and it's got really nice footage of the birds in flight and around Clumac Noise entering a nest site there give you a typical look at the small little spaces they use and also lots of nice footage of swifts in Bannerhead town in Offaly which is a really really good town for swifts and um, so I'm going to play a segment of that video I'm going to cut it a little bit short um, because some of the information at the end of it isn't is no longer accurate but it's still very very good footage so I'm going to play that for you now and I hope you can um, hear see that footage and, and hear the audio clearly <laughs> Swifts are amazing birds. Gracing their skies for just three short months each summer. The nest in buildings in our towns and cities, but have also found homes in some of Ireland's most historic sites, such as Clonmacnoise. Here, their incredible aerial displays and nest sites in the monastic buildings makes them an integral part of the heritage of the area.
So swifts are really fascinating little species. They uh, come to Ireland for just a short period each summer, May, June and July, uh, to breed every year. They're very much a bird that lives life in the air. They feed in the air, they drink in the air, and they even sleep in the air. So although the swift can be mixed up with a few other species, there are a few ways that you can tell them apart from the likes of swallows and martens. So the swift is a bit bigger than the swallow or the marten. It's got very angular wings. It flies with great speed. And one of the ways to tell them apart is the, the call that it makes. Quite often you see them or hear them up and down the main streets of our towns making this really uh, iconic and telltale screech as they fly up and down the main street. And the other way that you can tell the swift apart is by their nest. So they nest in under the eaves generally of houses, but you'll never see the nest. Whereas with the swallow, you'll often see the cup-shaped nest in the barn. Uh, with the house martin, you see that dome nest in the apex of the house. With the swift, they just disappear in under the eaves of the house and you don't actually see the nest. So uh, today we're in Banahern, County Offaly, which is one of the best towns in the Midlands uh, for swifts. However, the numbers are in decline. Uh, the latest bird atlas has shown us that their numbers have declined by about 25% in the past 40 years. So they're a species that uh, really needs our help. In order to help them, one of the first things we need to know is where they're nesting. Swifts mainly nest in uh, urban areas, in buildings, in uh, offices, in homes, and many nest sites in these places have been lost over recent years. So we really need the public to try and help us by sending in their sightings, and particularly if they know where the birds are nesting. And to do that, they can simply log on to the Bird of Charlotte website and look at our So again, all your sightings um, of and nest sites to swifts at birdwatchireland.ie, please. Uh, really good. Uh, again, there's that email address, swifts at birdwatchireland.ie. Can't sort of hammer that home enough. So please send all your inquiries there. We do get a lot of, of inquiries and um, records submitted to us during May and uh, right through to August. So um, do bear with us. We will respond and follow up on all emails. It just might take us a couple of days. And if you've got some an urgent query or something that's not quite um, uh, uh, exciting, uh, just email myself directly or wheeling at birdwatchireland.ie. You've seen the footage of the Swifts in the video there, and you can see how they were. They look quite black when they're silhouetted against the sky, and they they move around quite rapidly. And you've seen some footage of the the, the other confusion species too. So it's not as um, black and white or as straightforward as you might think looking at a still image like this um, so do take time to get your eye in um, and do report any of your sightings that you have so I suppose in summary what we're asking or what I want to tell you is um, that we will be serving in counties Leitrim, Roscommon, Dublin and Clare uh, over the next uh, few weeks and months and if you bump into someone wearing a, a, a swift survey uh, high vis uh, do say hello um, at a social distance and um, show them the local swift colonies if you know um, and email any any information or, or queries you have to swifts at birdwatchireland.ie and hopefully you will um, get an opportunity to 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 have our workshops and our follow-up um, talks and presentations uh, in the flesh in the future when covid um, 19 restrictions are lifted and it's safe to do so um, so please don't hesitate to get involved and, and reach out to us um, and we'd love really your help and um, love to hear from you. If you want more information on SWIFTS and how you can help them and survey them and, and all sorts, we published a lovely Saving SWIFTS guide last year and it's available on our website. Um, if you um, go to, to our website there in the publications, you can download it there for free. Um, alternatively, you could just Google uh, Birdwatch Ireland Saving SWIFTS guide and it'll bring you directly to the link there. Uh, we have really nice um, Swifts, Swift survey um, pages on our on our website and you can find that at birdwatchireland.ie. Go to our work and volunteer surveys. You'll find those pages and there is also 
um, reports from our past surveys where we carried out in, in, in counties previously. And you can see the level of detail we go into with those reports and the various recommendations we've made for towns and villages around those counties. So I want to say thanks very much for, to everyone for watching um, and a very special thanks to Leitrim, Clare, South Dublin and Roscommon County Councils for um, getting us to, to, to perform this work because they've identified the importance of protecting swifts in their counties. And I want to thank the respective heritage officers, Sarah Malone, Congella Maguire, Rosalind Dwyer and Nolik Feeney for, for, for their work and enthusiasm in doing that. And of course, the Department of Culture, Heritage and the Gaeltacht and the Heritage Council for their funding uh, channeled through the various the county councils and uh, the heritage officers and the county council budgets to to allow us um, to, to, to do that. So it's really important. And without the funding, none of this would be possible. So we can't do live questions, unfortunately, but happily answer any queries to or wheeling at birdwatchireland.ie or to swifts at birdwatchireland.ie. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. That save, that other video that I just played is um, up on our YouTube channel too. So if you'd like to rewatch it again, it's got some really nice footage there as well. So thanks very much, everybody. And hopefully be hearing from many of you over the weeks and months to come.